Microsoft has just released their newest report for the Work Trend Index, and this particular one is around this equation of performance in the age of AI. Now, this is an interesting one because there's basically three core points that they make. This is a, a survey analysis, uh, especially that's done uh, quite robustly. It's across hundreds of organizations, and it represents over 3 million employees in terms of their satisfaction, feedback, and engagement scores, as well as you know the public uh, data around the stock market value uh, and stock price data of these organizations. The first point that this thing is making is that for the bottom line, employee engagement does matter. And many people believe this to be the case, right? There are people in HR, there are people in certain discipline areas who've been really investing in employee experience, and they've always believed that employee engagement matters. Now we have pretty irrefutable proof on multiple instances that employee engagement does lead to things that matter to higher executives and people that are making these large scale investment decisions. And it's a pretty substantial difference. As an example, on average, each additional point of engagement reported by employees added about a $46,000 uh, difference in market cap per employee, right? So each time you improve engagement, there's, there's a very direct correlation in terms of often what the organizational um, value is. And and that makes sense because if you think of a goodwill and you think of the value, you know, beyond uh, baseline EBITDA, there's a lot of value that we drive um, with, you know, highly engaged, highly performant and successful employees. Now, the other thing that's interesting, there are ways in which you can improve that employee engagement. And I think it's an important distinction that a lot of organizations struggle with understanding how do I you know, get baseline employee engagement understanding and then how do I start moving that dial upwards, right? How do I get those point gains in employee engagement and potentially the value that they provide? And so they had some really great examples. And I think nowadays we're seeing that manager enablement where managers can have frameworks where they can have uh, data sets and tools, whether it's through Viva Insights or whether it's through, you know, alignment with goals uh, in Viva Goals or whether it's, you know, using, um, you know, Copilot and other tools, uh, Pulse uh, for feedback surveys and more to get, you know, more um, capability to upskill the skills uh, and the tool usage that those managers can use to improve how they support employees and get effective feedback. You know, that matters a lot today. So, that's that's the other big piece to this is yes it matters but we also um, have a clear understanding of what really drives it and while you can drive employee engagement from the top down at the executive and leadership level corporate communications other things like that and you can drive it a little bit from the bottom up by creating communities and and enabling storylines for people to have a voice at the end of the day that manager you know cohort in the middle is really important to empower in different ways and so that's the feedback i would take from this the second um major point that Microsoft made was that communications um, has a big impact on employee engagement, which makes natural sense. And they talked about goals, which is a relatively new category for most employee experience uh, groups, where OKR methodologies and things like Viva Goals are having an impact. And, you know, for many organizations, they're seeing a pretty substantial difference. You know, 46% are more likely to see their organizations as strong communicators when, you know, they, they have uh, higher employee engagement. And so that reception that people have, their confidence in leadership, their ability to understand that the uh, organization has good focus, right? Those are all things that come with high employee engagement. And this is a, a little bit of a difference in that for a lot of organizations today, um, we know that this is a bit of a problem. We need to work on it. What's different now is we have new uh, categories of tools like Viva Goals that take something like OKRs and goal management and allows more effective communication, prioritization, and alignment on that throughout the organization. So going back to my first point, when we talked about managers and this cohort in the middle, that cohort is a key con constituent uh, group or population group when we think of success of something like Viva Goals, right? When you roll out these technologies, when those groups are starting to use it to rationalize the higher level leadership targets with, you know, the what was happening, you know, in the in the trenches, that's when you start to really see um, not just high engagement, right, but you actually start to see a lot more performance gains as well. So, um, so that's a really good signal that, you know, these these newer categories, um, if you yourself have not explored OKR methodologies at scale across the organization, or things like goals that they have an impact, but also, you know, where, um, you know, analytics and insight to improve our communications matters. So if you don't know this, one of the other problems some organizations run into when they do that top down push, is they, you know, use one medium. So they, you know, it's the internet news, it's things like that. And so one of the things that's really important is, you know, those storylines, it's the 
the voice of everyone else and connecting those things together that really makes a big difference. So, you know, tools like Viva Amplify that allow you to create communication campaigns and think of this more holistically from a communication perspective are also, you know, directly correlated to uh, improvements in, you know, communications engagement uh, and the success and efficacy of communications. Because, you know, if you bring it to me in the context of my work or in the way that I want, or you give it to me in the voice of somebody I know, right, instead of that top down thing, you know, a peer of mine uh, who is amplifying that communication because it resonated with them and they've made a storyline post, you know, each of those things are going to have a greater success than if we just had the one mechanism, which, which makes natural sense. Now, the last item in this report from Microsoft is the importance of this. Um, they call it a feedback flywheel. But this value of having a way to get feedback uh, from organizations, uh, you know, again, the mid-level is really important here. Uh, but also at an organizational or even a personal level, um, we have new signals. Um, we call them uh, indirect and direct signals, right? So you have direct uh, signals like what's in uh, Glint, if you use Microsoft Viva Glint today, where you get those employee engagement survey results, right? Those are direct feedback because they have comments, they have, you know, there's a lot of uh, very clear input from that. Now, there's a lot of indirect feedback as well. So think of uh, Viva Insights, the digital signals of behavior, how people work. Um, or the signals that you get from, you know, these communities and uh, storylines and things like that in Viva Engage. Those types of experiences when collected together give us a new set of um, data that we didn't have before that allows us to make more informed and intelligent decisions on how to optimize our employee engagement. And so when you think of this go forward strategy, you know, now we have the data, it's collected for us. And Copilot and AI makes it far easier for us to make sense of that data, right? In the Glint example, you might have tens of thousands of comments in that feedback survey, but it doesn't matter because with Copilot, you can accelerate the processing time, you know, the interpretation time, because you can use natural language questions and answers. You can, um, you know, uh, ask for summarizations. You can do, you know, sentiment analysis. You can do all these different things that were, you know, more, more difficult in the past or becoming much faster and easier to do. So there's more of an expectation that we should be um, adjusting our approach and coaching people and guiding people and doing things like that sooner rather than later. And that kind of a change is, is being driven by tooling and digital improvement. It's being driven by age of AI and how AI is changing it. And it's also being driven by, I think, a more mature understanding across businesses of the value of employee engagement, of productivity experiences, and more. So um, I really encourage you to take a look if you haven't looked at the work trend report yourself. They even have a, if you don't have time, they have a one pager version of it that you can look at. Even it, its own report is only about three pages. But, um, you know, I think this is just another set of signals that says, hey, there are things we can do right now that improve employee engagement, that improve em employee communication, that improve, you know, goals and feedback. We should be executing those things because the return is quite substantial for those, you know, who care about their shareholder price or who care about, you know, um, patient health in a, in a health, uh, health institution or who care about educational quality and student enrollments, right, uh, in, a, in a university. So, you know, depending on your own drivers, right, these types of metrics are still very similar. And we see it even in non, you know, stock led marketplaces. I hope this has been helpful for you and looking forward to chatting with you guys soon about other reports and interesting insights in the industry.